Welcome back on this Thursday. Welcome as we continue with Exodus chapter 9. So far, we have seen four plagues that God sent through Moses to the Egyptians. The river of blood, the frogs, the gnats, the flies. And we're continuing. Pharaoh continues to have his heart hardened to refuse to let the Israelites go. Verse 1 of chapter 9. Then the Lord said to Moses, Go into Pharaoh and say to him, Thus says the Lord, the God of the Hebrews, Let my people go, that they may serve me. For if you refuse to let them go and still hold them, behold, the hand of the Lord will fall with a very severe plague upon your livestock that are in the field, the horses, the donkeys, the camels, the herds, and the flocks. But the Lord will make a distinction between the livestock of Israel and the livestock of Egypt, so that nothing at all that belongs to the people of Israel shall die. And the Lord set a time, saying, Tomorrow the Lord will do this thing in the land. And the next day the Lord did this thing. All the livestock of the Egyptians died, and not one of the livestock of the people of Israel died. And Pharaoh sent, and behold, not one of the livestock of Israel was dead. But the heart of Pharaoh was hardened, and he did not let the people go. The fifth plague is the death, the plague upon the livestock, bringing them to death. As we look at this notice again of how he says, thus says the Lord, the Lord being Yahweh, um, or the I am, the name that he revealed to Moses, uh, a new name, not the name that he used with Abraham, Isaac, or Jacob. The Lord would do this very severe thing. And there would be that distinction between Israel and against Egypt. Israel's livestock would be saved where Egypt's would go to be, go to death. Notice the protection that he has for his people, showing up how he is their God by sending the plague, not upon them, but upon the Egyptians, those that he is fighting against to have his people released from captivity. Also notice at the very end, Pharaoh's response. He refused to let them go, and the heart of Pharaoh was hardened hardened, maybe out of anger, that God would do this to them, but theirs would be spared. Isn't that kind of how it goes with us? That our anger can harden our heart to hearing the word of God, to doing what's right as God leads us. Let's continue on with verse 8. And the Lord said to Moses and Aaron, take a handful of soot from the kiln and let Moses throw them in the air in the sight of Pharaoh. It shall become a fine dust over all the land of Egypt and become boils breaking out on the sores, uh, in sores on man and beast throughout all the land of Egypt. The sixth plague is a plague of boils. It's interesting here because in these passages, it doesn't really mention if Egypt or if Israel was spared or not. It's not mentioned, um, but as we look at it, after a while, he's, he keeps mentioning it. Sometimes he doesn't. Other times, it's not as important. But knowing that God is protecting his people, I would say that he did spare them in that way as well. Verse 12, but the Lord hardened the heart of of Pharaoh. And, and he did not listen to them as the Lord had spoken to Moses. Again, uh, it's interesting between the two uh, different times, it talks about the heart of Pharaoh being, Pharaoh being hardened, the Lord hardening the heart. And later on, we'll see that Pharaoh, in a way, hardened his own heart as well. The point being is that he would not listen to the Lord. And out of that anger, out of that spite, out of simply not believing, lack of faith, the hardness of heart kept him do, from doing what was right. Let's continue again with verse 22. 
Then the Lord said to Moses, stretch out your hand toward heaven so that there may be hail in all the land of Egypt, on man and on beast, and on every plant in the field in the land of Egypt. Again, this is the seventh plague, the plague of, of hail, of a great storm. Um, and notice it's on man and beast, every plant of the field. What animals were left after the other plague would now be beaten on by this hail um, throughout all the land. But in verse 26, it says, Only in the land of Goshen, where the people of Israel were, was there no hail. God's people were spared, showing God's power over nature, how God was the one in control of all things, trying to let Pharaoh know that he was all powerful and that he should let the people go. Let's continue. Verse 27. Then Pharaoh sent and called Moses and Aaron and said to them, This time I have sinned. The Lord is in the right and I and my people are in the wrong. Plead with the Lord, for there has been enough of the Lord's thunder and hail. I will let you go, and you shall stay no longer. In the verses that follow in between 28 and 34, it mentions of how Pharaoh knew that he would turn his back, that he did not fear the Lord, and he would change his mind. But yet Pharaoh continued to do what he said he would do. He went out, he prayed to the Lord, and the Lord stopped the storm. Verse 34. But when Pharaoh saw that the rain and hail and the thunder had ceased, he sinned yet again and hardened his heart, he and his servants. He's just not learning, is he? The plagues seem to be increasing in intensity, showing the power that God has over all of creation, even over the storms of heaven. But yet, he, it says he sinned again. He sinned again by bearing false witness to Moses that he would let the people go, and he changed his mind and would not let them go and instead hardened his heart by his disobedience to God, by his own sinfulness. Sometimes our anger at God or sometimes our anger at others hardens our heart as well. And it leads us not to be open to correction, not to be open to God's will. May God lead us and guide us never to have that hardness of heart against God or against others, that we might be open to his correction and his leading. Come back tomorrow when we will hit uh, plagues eight and nine, getting ready for the, the big number 10 coming up next week. We'll see you tomorrow.